Now, one thing I can say is being an entrepreneur who is in the area of landlording, knowing the state laws in every area of the situation is going to be the best. Researching is going to be the Bible to your success. And people can tell you that you're always going to have issues. They may want to put their negative vibe on what it is you do, but you don't have to do and be and, and, um, you don't have to do it their way, as they're saying. People are already always going to put a bad mouth onto something that either they're ignorant about, they have no idea because they're not even doing it, they just see the other side, and it can really um, put a stifle on what it is you're doing. Welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 67. My shining entrepreneurs, we got 17 people in the chat. Wonderful, Ron, David, Christopher, Natasha, Michelle. Yes, 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 welcome. Amanda, I'm so glad that you all are here. I'm super excited about talking to you today. So I did go to court and I... Uh, started off filing the eviction notice. Um, I won't tell you how all that went because there is something I'm learning in the experience of being an individual in the system um, as a landlord. There are more laws and tenant rights in um, renting than the landlord because landlords tend to be entitled. They tend to be you know, just like I was at the very beginning, when somebody puts a, a situation into my focus that I was not intending as a landlord and they're causing me problems, I want them out immediately. Well, yeah, I'm not going to lie. That was exactly how I was. However, in the state of Ohio and other states as well, tenants have a right to and they have more rights because they have more issues that come about. I don't know if landlords are more conspicuous than tenants or vice versa because tenants know that they have better rules and laws in the system. But that's not what I want to talk about today. Today, I want to specifically talk about how we maneuver through the eviction process, what I'm not going to tell you everything because people can take advantage of the information and use it to their advantage, which makes the criminal justice system a lot more cloggy and a lot more ineffective, ineffective when pe the right people are really trying to do the right thing. So you have this tenant that is becoming a real problem with you. And all of a sudden, you try to give them the benefit of the doubt, see if you can work it out. And then you sometimes let things simmer. Um, when you let things simmer, they think they get away with things. Okay, I've let things simmer for almost six months just because my goal is to help support, not to kick out, not to have to go to court. My goal is to support. And so people who are unsupportive, who are non-caring, who have addictions that they don't even realize they have or don't care to realize that they have, they could care less of how good a person is trying to treat them. That's where all their bridges have been burned before meeting, okay? But, you know, some of us, we, we still, you know, want to assist. And we can't help everybody. I realize that. I'm learning that in the experience right now of this eviction process. But then there's also this thing where if a person feels a certain way about something, they can go to... Uh, do something else. They can go in and get uh, another situation to take place. Well, in the criminal justice system, in, in, the, in the local levels, a lot of police officers feel that landlords will try to do something like get a protection order, emergency, um, constructive 
uh, eviction and use that in lieu of just evicting. That pisses off the, the, the system, I guess. Because when we do that as landlords, what takes place is it makes it a problem to where I guess the police can be, you know, considered, um, they can go to court and be fined. They can lose their job. They can, you know, there's a lot of stipulations that go into how to handle something else when an eviction should be taking place. So I got that. I really understood what the police officers were saying yesterday, but that's not my situation. My situation was, you know, when charges are increased and things are becoming a lot, you know, more um, interesting in the story, then my goal is protection. I'm in protection mode at that point. But the reality is when a landlord becomes protective over property, it looks as though the goal is to get that tenant out of there by any means necessary. And that's not the case with everyone. And that's why I can't share with you the step-by-step -step ways that I was able to get the um, process started a lot faster. That actually the criminal behavior of an individual can trump an actual eviction. But if we use that and share that with someone, a manipulative person can really and truly foster that information and seed it to get what it is that they want. And that's what the criminal, criminal justice system does not want because they won't know who's telling the truth because they're meeting two strangers who's trying to prove that they're right. And I so get it. And my hat goes off to the 143 police officers and 49 civilian officers in the state of Ohio, in the city of Youngstown, that are trying their ultimate best to figure out who's right and who's wrong while in the midst of chaos. And they have to make a quick decision. That is a serious position to be in. And I know it takes a lot and it drains a lot of these women and men who have been sworn to protect and serve. So I get that. But on the same hand, I, as a landlord, get what I'm going through as well. I get that Tenants may try to manipulate and maneuver a situation. Me, myself, personally, if as renting this house when I was 21, 23, and I was told to leave, I would get my preparations in order. I would always have money saved at least three months in advance to whereas if I needed to do something or go somewhere, I would be able to start that process. You know, but that's me thinking ahead. But you have others who can barely think in the moment. And I get that. And that's why these homes are available to those type of individuals. But a lot of people don't like these homes because of the headache that it brings the community. But see, my son was murdered in an abandoned house that should have been um, torn down, that was eventually burned down while in the midst of doing um, investigation. Now, I don't know if it was because of the fact that there was a conspicuous something in the house that was going to lead uh, fingerprints or something like that, or if it was really and truly something that was just an arson, just, you know, uh, you know, sometimes the fire department, they use abandoned homes and and they go in and they try to, you know, burn it down just to see how they can get out. You know, there's a process and a practice for that as well. I just wish that the city of Youngstown could have done that before my son was found dead in that abandoned house. Um, but regardless of all of that, going back to landlording, it is extremely important that, you know, the rules be followed. I was also told, and I said, okay, well, if, you know, 
uh, individual is causing big havoc to me. And this is something that I choose to walk away from. It's my property. I want it all gone. I want to, you know, everybody gone and I'm going to start fresh again. Oh, now we're going to red tag. Well, see, here's the thing with that. Going back to my son. Walking into or being uh, lured into an abandoned house, you will red tag, but you won't burn, you, you won't tear down or demolish a house that should be demolished, but yet you'll red tag and you'll leave it empty until someone comes from the city or from the state or somewhere and tells you that your property is either um, approved or denied as a, a habitable living, living space. And see, that is a problem for me as well. And also being told something by an authority official that is untrue. Because when you go to the city, when you go to the county, they tell you, oh no, you were supposed to do it this way. Well, get your research in order, especially if you're sitting there saying that I'm not going to make a decision for this person or for that person. You have two people that are arguing. You should at least know your own local laws. That's all I'm saying. That's it. But going back to the courts of Ohio, you can get granted protection. You can get granted emergency. But it's still is up to the person if they're going to be an upright standing individual to just do what they are asked. Not to demand it, but just morally, correctly. If you know you haven't paid your rent, if you know that you have illegal activity that you've been charged with, that you're about to face criminal charges, and you're asked to move, and you choose not to. It's a blatant disrespect to the laws, blatant disrespect to the agreements of the house, blatant disrespect to the individuals in the house. And it is just amazing how people believe that the entitlement, the entitlement, is something that they can lean on. And then they lean on it to the degree of the loss. You have 30 days. Well, even in 30 days, you still have to go through the eviction process. You have to spend money, spend time, parking tickets, parking um Fines, denies, acceptances with other things that go with the acceptances, but not totally available to get this individual out. Now, I just don't even know if after 30 days, if the person will leave. I mean, will the sheriff have the power after <laughs> an eviction, oh, if I pay the money, then you'll tell them to leave <laughs> in the state of Ohio. It amazes me. It amazes me how everything is all about the fines, the costs, but it's not about the genuine proof and realization of the situation. And that's what I want to talk about Shining Entrepreneurs, the highs and lows of this chronicle is to say that, you know, yes, I've experienced this for the first time. I'm not even all the way through it. I have no idea how this thing is going to turn out. Although yesterday, something tapped into me and said, stop the running. Stop going here and there and everywhere. Stop trying to subpoena. Stop trying to, you know, do it the way that the criminal justice system always taught you to do it. Because this is a system 
that does things exactly as they're going to do it. So chill. Stay calm. Stay in the know. Do your part. When it's your time for court and you have to go and present evidence on your behalf, let's see what the system really can do. Because what I found the system to be able to do is just put paperwork out there and this paperwork can be ignored. And then when it's ignored, then it goes to another level that the person who manages, owns, is a landlord must now pay to what? Get an attorney, get a liaison. And that's not what this is all about. So I've learned something today that I am going to take and put into my clauses um, and just really and truly interview honest people. I'm going to give them that opportunity to show me who they are, not months later, not weeks later, because everyone can show you who they are and you believe them because you don't know them until they have gotten what they want. And we, we live in a world of narcissistic, entitled individuals who feel as though everything is about them, who feels as though they have the right to do whatever they want to do, how they want to do it. But, you know, there comes a time where when we ignore that energy, it eventually dies. It eventually dies. And that's what I think this is all about the universe telling me to be still and just know, be prepared and just, you know, wait this time out. Shout out to the three men in the local, um, oh goodness, I forget where I was at, Youngstown Municipal. Shout out to you because you know what? You gave me the best advice. When you told me <clears throat> to sit back and let it marinate for 30 days. What has been happening in the last day or two is not going to be so severe and immediate that 30 days can handle. And that's what made me really sit back. So when we're going through the process, sometimes it's not the ego trip that makes you want to say, I got to win this. I got to win this. And that's how I was when I first started this. I'm like, oh, yeah, this person is getting out. But it's okay because that person is going through something as well. My tenant is really and truly and genuinely going through something. You think of the fact that it is chilly outside. It is cold out. Have no idea what's happening next. That is a critical time in a person's life. Not saying that he's right the way or she's right, the way that they're doing whatever it is they're doing. I'm just saying I can understand it in that position, you know? And so that's why I choose to use my leverage to just stay away and allow the time to make it work. And it, it took a lot of maturity from me to make this decision and finally admit that it's not all about me getting what it is that I want. It's about the respect of the other individual that they're going to lose their home. And shout out to oh, that police officer that I was really, really upset at. <laughs> you know who you are. But when you said that, it made me think at that moment. It's not just about getting him out or her out. It is about realizing that this person is about to lose their home. And so I thought about my son. I thought about, you know, um, how I created these homes in his honor. You know, um, my, my driven purpose 
after being given the opportunity to be a part of this project was to do this in memory of him because of the severity of mental health issues and the choices that people make when they don't have anyone to turn to. And he had no one to turn to because I was unavailable at that time in his life. So my goal is to never see someone just out there. And so my heart went out. But yet I also have to protect those around me as well, as well as myself, most importantly. And these are the reasons why I do the things that I do, even though they look very harsh and difficult. I do them because, number one, I have to follow the rules and guidelines of the procedures in the state of Ohio, or I myself will be looking at (laughs) civil charges, you know, and different things like that. So, and then people look and think, oh, she's being a pushover. No, it's not being a pushover. It's legally doing, working the process that needs to be worked because so many people have manipulated the Tennessee laws in the state of Ohio until they had to put things on the books in order to make it legal to do this or that. Look at the Hatfields and McCoys. And it was all about property, a pig, okay? So so if we go back and we look this thing through, time will just maneuver through. So as entrepreneurs, that's what I want to leave with you today. I want to leave with you the fact that sometimes it may not feel good when we lose or when a situation does not work in our favor or when we have to continue to be mature and elevate through an experience. And eviction is that type of thing. So I'm going to be talking a little bit more about my experiences going to court. I have to go to court um, for in November. So I will be letting you know what I'm getting myself prepared to do. Um, I have to promote uh, a lot of evidence and I have to get things together and put things together. And this is why I was about to subpoena this and subpoena that. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm just going to go to court on behalf of the victim and I'm going to, you know, be available to that individual and continue to do what I need to do. And before I know it, I recognize and the judge, thank you, Judge S, for letting me know that basically everything is going to work itself out in its own timing I just need to be patient and work with the process. So I believe it's going to work itself out without me. This is my presumption. This is my prediction. I presume and I predict that the tenant's actions is going to clear away everything in its path. And everything I need is going to be given to me, which is to get my property back and to be able to move forward with this and not judge another because of the actions of another. Because I'm still going to be just as giving and loving and kind, but in a different type of way. However, this is not going to stop my mission. And this is what I want you to also understand. There are going to be people trying to come in to stop your mission because it's not their mission. That they didn't think about it. And they see because they're in the mix of how easy it is to just be a person who helps. But because they don't have the power, they don't have the ability. They would rather see it not exist than not to be that one to have done it. And the egocentric nature of the individual will show that forth. So this is the chronicles I want to leave with my entrepreneurs today. Let's just keep our focus, keep our patience, know that everything works 
for the benefit of the individuals involved and just be consistent, be on time and be the best individual that we can be in the shoes that we fit every day because we know what that shoe feels like. We know how at the end of the day, and we take those shoes off, whether they fit or whether they were too snug or whatever, we know. And that's what we have to abide by. So keep doing you, keep being the best. And thank you for joining Chronicles of a Nonprofit. Thank you for all your chats. Um, Thank you for all of your um, well wishes. Thank you, Natasha, for praying for me. Thank you, Amanda, for wishing me well in court yesterday. Thank you so much, um, Ron, for being here and just letting me know that you are a voice to talk to. You guys are wonderful, magnificent, and this is what the entrepreneurial experience is about, building yourself with strong-minded people that are Similar to you doing certain things that not exactly the same, but doing things that work to benefit you. You know, um, Elaine, you're an attorney and that is a great thing. I will probably be needing your assistance. So I will be looking, um, reaching out to you as well. And, you know, it's just the power, the power of the most high that continues to keep us balanced. And that's what the scales do. They balance the truth with what we truly and genuinely experience. And either way, everything is going to work out exactly as it should. Thank you so much. And we will see you next time.